Welcome to my retro watches and yes I'm back with another digital watch uh, and this time it's a Casio uh, this is from the 70s so it's an early one I think it might be a 77 um, it's a chronograph it's in very very good condition for its age uh, you can see there's hardly a scratch on that screen and there's a few scuffs around the case but nothing major um, it's been well used. The model reference is a 31QS-11. Uh, um, and what we're going to do, obviously it's a non-runner. And I've had a little peek inside, um, but I've not touched anything. And you'll see it inside yourself in just a moment. Um, the aim of this one is to clean up the battery leak and strip all the module down, clean all the components, uh, rebuild, and see if it's going to start. So, let's uh, take the back off, shall we? So I've already loosened it, uh, but uh, you'd need a, back, um, a case back tool if you're trying something like this for the first time. You can buy a very cheap one. It looks a bit like this. Uh, these slide up and down, and you can tighten it. Dead easy. take this off now what let me just turn it around so what I've noticed with this is the circuit board that looks pretty clean obviously inside the battery compartment there is some serious um, leakage so what we'll need to do is clean well take the module out and clean all that as best we can but while we're in there we may as well clean the board and clean the, the contacts on the screen uh, and strip it all back and probably put it on the microscope as well and have a look at it from there. Um, so what we'll try and do now is remove it from the case and try and remove the board. So to remove the, the module, uh, first of all what I've noticed is we've got a case seal or a gasket and it's actually coming away here uh, either someone's fitted the wrong size or it's it's grown sometimes they do that it's very old already I can feel that the, the rubber's quite hard uh, and we will replace that that one's going to be no good at all and then I'll get a screwdriver and find somewhere safe to pry one module. We'll remove the case for now, we'll come back to that later. Usually with these uh, Casio modules the screen uh, surround is just held in by two pins and it's worth removing that now like so. So there we, excuse my fingers, there's the screen, there's the two pins that just push into the case. Uh, I've got my trusty uh, screw down uh, containers that I'm going to keep all my little screws and bits and pieces in and we'll also work on, to, on this. So we'll try and remove the module with the screws that I can see and then we'll put it onto the microscope and we'll have a look at um, the extent of the damage of the battery leak, whether it's extensive or whether it has just stayed in the battery compartment. Uh, and if it's damaged any of the board uh, or not. So I'm doing this very much on the fly because I haven't gone this far into this watch. So I have no idea what to expect. I don't even know the full construction yet. Um, 
but after working on quite a few of these they're usually pretty straightforward so with the four screws removed I need my thinner a yellow ended screwdriver which I think is 0.8 of a millimeter on the the ends for anybody who wants to know that sort of information and then we need to have a look at how this is all held in and how we remove it so again it looks like a bit of a prying action on this one and you want I'm doing it all off camera I didn't realize you just need to be quite careful that you're not damaging the underside of the board or pulling anything that doesn't want to be pulled so if you start feeling resistance it's either because it's in the tucked in the, the case ring here or there's a, another screw or there's something like one of the pushes sometimes these contacts are all connected to part of it there we are I'll just put that down and look on the underside of the board and to be honest with the naked eye because I'm not wearing my Optivisor that is pretty clean uh, we'll examine it in a way and then what you can see here obviously is all the battery terminal which is all pretty crusted up and then these are what we refer to as the zebra strips and underneath this bit here is where the LCD screen is and the these are a rubber um, conductive material that sends the power uh, to fr from the board onto the onto the screen and so these are always worth taking off and giving a good clean as well so the next shot you'll see is uh, this all set up on the microscope and we'll have a look at it a bit closer okay we're now on the uh, the microscope if you're interested in the scope that i use uh, it's an am scope and it's a 306 uh, it's on times 20 uh, magnification and what you can see here is the underside of the board so all these little rectangular parts are where the zebra strip uh, would sit and take its power to the lcd and the cutout here is obviously where the battery is and where the leakage has been so that's where I'm starting first with the examination and you can quite clearly see that there is I want to find something to uh, use to point so we can see here uh, is some some battery leakage which will clean off and again over on this side um, I have seen a lot worse than this has to be said this could hopefully fingers crossed be a very simple quick clean uh, and uh, the watch will be be working again uh, this is obviously the light and sometimes with this it's hard to do with the camera mounted you can sometimes see the the filament of the bulb make sure that that's intact um, I actually need to, to look with my eye to see and yes, I can see it, but I don't think it'll come through clearly on the video. Um, so we just keep on examining quickly for now. So there's uh, something a bit interesting. So this here would appear to be a repair. And that is not a repair by me. That is not natural. Um, so I would guess perhaps there's been uh, a break in this um, part here uh, which would have led to a bad sector uh, a bad segment sorry not a bad sector on the LCD and someone's tried to repair that so I'll have to have a look at that again um, it's the first time actually I've seen somebody else's uh, repair um, so I'm quite intrigued by that and over this side everything looks okay this uh, stuff here is I think it's the flux from when they've soldered I see again this a lot and it's always around the soldered joints 
uh, and you can see it is actually going to fall away. So when we do actually clean this, that most of that will come off anyway, along with this sort of stuff here. If I can sort of scratch away, but we're going to clean it with with alcohol. I so um, I forgot how to say it. isopropanol alcohol. If I've got that wrong, I'm sorry. Um, and we're going to wipe that down using a, 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 a fiberglass brush, which I'll show you in just a moment. So uh, we'll just flip this over and examine the, the back side. And what, we actually, what I'm trying to look for here is all of these are called traces. So you want to look at the traces and make sure there's no corrosion uh, or worse still, any breaks in those. If you've, if you've got a break, uh, it can be repaired. Um, so if we do find one in this, we'll repair it and you'll be able to see how that's done. Uh, but so far we're looking like everything is intact. So, okay, that is the circuit board examined and now we will look at the the underside of the uh, watch module and yes that is the battery um, acid doing its thing so all the leakage has, has got bad on all of that uh, all, all those contacts there and inside let's just try and get that in focus for you again there we are so at times 20 it looks pretty horrific it has to be said um, and while we're here we'll look at the uh, zebra strip because sometimes yeah I think it's that's about focus very hard to focus with this using my mobile phone on a bracket hanging off the microscope um, however we'll be looking at the zebra strip there really just to see if there's any uh, particles, any damage to it. Uh, I'm just curious obviously to see what that is, whether that's just a bit of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes the battery acid gets onto this as well, so you've got to clean all that off. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see much on the other side. No. So what we might try and do here is um, break this down, see if we can actually remove all of this battery contact it might not be able to remove uh, but sometimes they can be and if we can get that out it's going to make it a lot easier to clean so the next shot's going to be back on the on the workbench and we'll start with the the module and clean the uh, corrosion that we saw on there all right so we're back on the bench and uh, this here it is a fiberglass pen and obviously it's made out of fiberglass and if I twist this uh, this black end here we can get this bigger or we can have it smaller and what that does is make it stiffer on the ends or looser on the ends uh, so or give you reach if you want to try and clean over the top of something they're very useful there are a mild abrasive in themselves um, I found them particularly good on modules. They seem to get rid of that real crystallized um, battery deposit. Uh, you can also use Q-tips or earbuds, whatever you want to call them, cotton buds. Um, the alcohol, I keep in a little jam jar. Uh, I change this regular, uh, but it's just convenient. And all we're going to literally do is dip the, that into the alcohol. Try and get this into focus a little bit for you. And we're just going to give it a, a good wipe. Now obviously, you might not have a microscope, but that's no matter. You can just use uh, any form of magnification. Magnifying glass, one of those static ones. You can buy an OptiVisor, which is what I use. Uh, an OptiVisor is a lifesaver. It has detachable lenses. It goes over your head, so it keeps all your hands free. Uh, they're quite cheap for what they are and they're useful for not just messing with watches they're useful for everything really um, 
I'm in my mid-40s, my eyesight's starting to fail and I find I use my Optivisor for the most silliest of things, just to make things easy. So while we're cleaning, you may as well clean the rest of the board because you don't know if there's uh, any grease from over the years with all the temperature changes the watch will have had in the environment it's lived in. You know, I have no idea the, the life this has had. Um, I bought it from eBay in a job lot, actually. I bought the whole job lot to get this particular one. Um, I sold all the others, which were a lot more modern, and I actually made a profit, so I get to keep this one for free. So if we flip it over, we saw more corrosion on this side. Um, so, again, just trying to do this as best I can on camera for you. I think once I'm happy with it, I'll put it back on the microscope and you can have a look and see the difference. I won't have done anything different other than what I'm doing now. Um, the one thing I will say is when you do use these um, fibre pens is they do leave little fibres behind. And you've got to make sure that you clean those off. Uh, again, because they could, you know, if they're lying across these contacts, for instance, it might not make the board work very well. Uh, now, I use various things for that. I've got a little blower, uh, which is just here, in fact. Now you can blow them off. Uh, or you use a bit of Rodico, which is, uh, I like to just call it Watchmaker's Blue Tack, which is, you know, sticky and it's good enough just to dab on and pick up all the, all the little bits. So it's definitely important to clean these parts uh, in a way because obviously that's the con the main contact that's going to make the the LCD screen work. So you want to make sure that it's definitely not got any grease on it, any impurities, any dirt. Okay. So I'm reasonably happy with that. I will examine it under the under the scope. Um, the next thing to try and do is to see if I can get that out. So I might just do a bit of this off camera uh, while I examine it and see if it can come out first of all. Uh, what we tend, what I would tend to try and do is to remove the zebra strip out of the way. It's whether that at this moment in time, I can't tell. No, it's probably going to come out from taking the screen out this side, which I think is what I'll do first. So we'll try and take the screen now. Uh, this video isn't really planned as I think I've already said. It's just me winging it all the way through. Uh, hopefully you might find it interesting enough and you don't switch off. Always be careful with screws. Uh, they're hard to replace. Um, you know, certainly if you're not used to using small tweezers and small and small screwdrivers, you know, here for instance, sometimes these are going to flick. So you want to just take out one screw, like so, and then the other one. Because if you leave it in there, uh, loose and undone, if you do knock it, it could go flying across the table, and you'd be pretty annoyed at that point. Okay, just gently going to push that from the back to see if it's going to come out. There we are. So the screen is out. That's just the reflection part. So put that away as well. And there's your little LCD screen and you can just pull these off and clean them. For the moment I'll just leave it like that because I'm going to come back to that later. Uh, so now that's out of the way we can have a look and see if all of that um, battery terminal is going to come out. It would certainly seem that that one is. 
So can we get the bottom one or not? Got to be careful because it's because it's got the the damage to it. It might have rotted through. So. And I'm doing this under with myself under no magnification, so yeah, see that one's broken. Okay, let me take that off off camera. Okay, with a gentle bit of persuasion, I've managed to get it out. Um, okay, that tab broke, but you saw that uh, on camera. And that wasn't through my headed hand, uh, heavy handedness, that is the destruction of battery acid I'm afraid. Uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over that just yet, I don't think that's going to affect it too much. But now it's out, it makes it a bit easier to clean, you can see this, you know, the, it just comes off quite easy just by touching it. But we'll do the same procedure with that, what I'll actually do is I get the... I get the alcohol and I put them in and I'll leave that to soak uh, for a few minutes and in the meantime we'll clean also inside there just to make a good job of it. Okay so the I'm doing all that again off camera which is no good. Now while we're cleaning with alcohol may as well clean the pusher contacts too. Okay, so now I'm happy with the cleaning, we'll just examine the uh, board under the scope and then I may as well do the contacts and show you those as well. Uh, and then we'll rebuild it and put a battery in it and see if it's going to fire up. So we're uh, now on the scope again after cleaning the, uh, the board and the contacts and now you'll see the results of the, uh, the cleaning. So. The contacts here were highly corroded and they're as clean as I can get them, put it that way. Um, what you can see there really is um, where the, the acid has actually eaten into the sort of the plating on the contacts, uh, plus some scratches where I guess somebody's tried to scratch it away, maybe even myself, that's hard to say. Uh, I doubt the, the fibre brush would have done that in fairness. And then the other contact here, which is the positive contact. Again, it's pretty clean. Um, so what we need to look at here really, before we start rebuilding, especially is the zebra strips. And just to make sure that there's no real dirt You know, those little flicks like that are probably a bit oversensitive, but it's worth doing a job well. And we'll check over the other side too. Okay, that's not a bit. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I've already put the screen in, as you might have noticed and the circuit board so again get it into try and get it into focus there we are so we had heavy uh, blue corrosion over here and the brushing has basically got rid of all that i can just see a few little bits but there's not really anything to to worry about too much and over here is nice and clean And we just check over the board to be sure we're happy. Now we'll turn it over the other side. And again, you can just see the remnants of some there. I could try and take that off. Um, I won't do that on the video, it'll bore you. Uh, and obviously check these, the main contacts to the screen or onto the zebra strip because that's really important they are clean uh, I have inspected that repair there um, 
I can't really say too much about it. Clearly, at some point it's been scratched, I would surmise. Uh, it's been scratched here, and somebody's tried to fill it in. And we've just got a little hair there, so we'll try and get rid of that. So overall, I'm happy uh, with the cleaning process. Uh, so all that remains now is to uh, rebuild the circuit onto the module, screw it all together, and see what happens. So, without further ado, we'll fit the board. And as you might remember, it was just four screws on this one. What I tend to do is just nip them up a little bit so you know that they're all going to line up first and alternate the corners and then once you're happy at the end you can tighten them up. That one's gone out of the hole. last thing you want to do is over tighten the board and crack it certainly when you've just spent uh, your time repairing it uh, what can also happen if you tighten tight some of these things too tight it can actually break the screen as well if the screen uh, is under pressure So they're all in, and I'll just nip them up a bit more. Okay, the uh, module is now complete. I'll turn it over. Need to work out what's the top, which is that, and carefully reinstall the screen surround. I have the case here and I've now polished it, give it a light polish, bring it all back up again. I'll show some better photos at the end uh, of the finished product. It's not in the best light here. So we're simply just going to drop the module in. Like so. I have a battery here. Now I do know with these as well is that so I can install the battery. I know that when I turn it over it's not going to be on. Because it has another little clip. Um, and I've had one of these similar before, and these sometimes can be really awkward. And it'll only work once the uh, the case back is on and in all in the right position. So rather than bore you with that, I'll put that on in a moment. I've also got a new seal, which will sit in there. And obviously that's going to help it with some of its waterproofing. So the next shot you should see uh, is when the watch is going to be working. So here it is, the finished Casio. Uh, I'm quite pleased with this. Um, off camera, it's probably taken me about three quarters of an hour at least to figure out how to set the damn thing. Um, these early Casios, as I'm starting to find with the other ones in my collection, um, 
are quite uh, difficult to uh, to set. So I thought I'd try and show you a little bit about how that works. Uh, what's pretty cool as well is you have these counters going across, um, which are quite neat to be honest with you. Uh, the little plus up here is the uh, AM PM, and yes, it is 11:13 PM here, um, and we have a stopwatch. Pretty standard. And I think from memory, if I press and hold this one, it then goes flashing. And this is a um, dual time. All right, 11.13. Instead of now going to stopwatch, uh, it goes to time zone. This here is the date. So I didn't realize it had a dual time, um, but obviously it does. And to turn that back again, you press and hold this bottom one on the right, it clears it back to stopwatch. So if you've got one of these and you want to know how to toggle it, it's toggling that for the bottom one here for the stopwatch and this one at the top here for dual time. And to reset that, you just press and hold it and back to time. However, to set the time is uh, quite a challenge and at first you think you've got something wrong. You have to press this button and this button together. Everything goes off and you think, what the hell is that? Then it comes on flashing, but you don't do anything at this point either. You keep holding and then they go off again. And then when you release, we are now at the uh, date, or what I think is the date setting. Um, but I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. This is nine for September. Um, there are 30 days in September, to my knowledge. Here, not just 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And resets at 39. I don't understand that at all. Um, I'm hoping somebody out there can enlighten me. Um, obviously, the arrow here is saying calendar, so it has to be the um, <laughs> the calendar. Anyway, you you would set theoretically the date, um, and I'm going to go still for the 28th because that's what it is. And then I press that, and then we can actually set the hour and the minute which I've already done. And then to come out of that, we press the light button and then we're back to where we were at the start. That is definitely uh, quite confusing uh, and without any instructions, that did take me quite some time. I can't find any instructions for this uh, because as much as we've got the, the, uh, the number here, it hasn't got the module number and I can find some module number catalogs uh, instructions but um, not for this one so hopefully uh, this video hasn't bored you to death it's quite a long one um, if you found it interesting uh, please give me a like and if you want to see some more uh, please subscribe uh, thank you very much for watching